here at the Mount at the IGAA conference. My man Philip Carter, God bless him. We thank God who I got with me. I just caught up with her. I saw her earlier, Tracy Morgan. How you doing? I am doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, excellent. Thanks for you even coming on the Say Your Peace show. We're honored that you grace with your presence. You was touching some points. What is the best thing that happened today? There's so many things that touch you. What was the best thing that you heard today or you gave out today for the independent artists? Right. Well, one thing, I was really, really excited about how the independent artists got involved. They asked their questions, questions that they got answers to. You know, they're not in the dark anymore. They truly know exactly what direction to go in from here. So that was pretty cool. So I think that was one of the main things that I took away, the fact that, you know, they got their questions answered. Now, um, you, you answered this question, but my, my viewers didn't, didn't they all wasn't there, so y'all don't know. What is it, when you hear some music that really is not too pleasant to your ears, how do you deal with that? Because some people don't know how to deal with it, but you have to tell them the truth. How do you deal with that when you hear something come across your desk, you're so busy that they want you, hear it, hear it, and you hear it, and it's like, how do you tell them, listen, this, it didn't meet the standards? How do you do it? Some people say, we don't like it, it's garbage, go back to the, um, the studio. How do you deal with that? Well, I'm not that harsh. Um, generally, I try to help the independent artists out because most of the time, it is those artists artist that will send you something that's not radio ready or radio friendly or something like that. So generally I would help those artists out by just letting them know some things they can do. I always encourage independent artists to get the ear of the professionals before you complete the project and begin to send it out to radio because by doing that you'll save yourself a lot of heartache. You really will. <laughs> and so that. You heard that right? So, you know, that's my biggest thing that I normally do. I would try to let them know as easy as I possibly can. Hopefully they will receive it. A lot of time artists put a lot of money in records and producing and getting it mastered and mixed and so forth. But, you know, go the extra mile. Before you do that, let those people who have an ear, not your mom, not your dad, because they're going to love you regardless. Regardless. Yeah, so let someone who is in the business really critique that project before you send it out to radio. How did you and Philip Carter meet? How did you connect with him to become a part of this great event for independent artists? How did that connection happen? And your love for independent artists to come and share the knowledge. Tell us a little, I know it's a two part question, but tell us a little something about that. Well, I've been knowing Philip for many, many years, probably over 20 years now. I've been knowing Philip. Uh, he played at my wedding, he sung at my wedding. So that's been many, many years ago. And uh, he just has a passion for helping artists to develop, helping them to be ready for the next level in their ministry. And that is something that the two of us saw eye to eye on. So it was just a matter of, hey, when he said he had this going on, I was there. He didn't have to ask, but one time, and I'm like, no problem. I've been coming back every single year. I'll be back next year. So um, we just connected because we both have a passion and a heart to help others. What's new for Tracy Morgan? I know radio, you do so much, but what's new for you? What's in the making if you can reveal that? Mm -hmm. Well, we're in the midst of, uh, in the midst of, I don't know if I should reveal it or not, but you know, we're working on some things. We're working on some things. You know, God is good and he's given us the release on some things that uh, I've had in my heart for some time now and soon we'll be able to bring that to pass. So we're really excited about that. Um, got a great group of people around me. Right now my show is syndicated, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and just hoping to go to the next level and pick up more radio stations along the way and spread the gospel of Jesus in the process. So that's where my heart is. Uh, like I said, we are working on some other things uh, right now. I'm trying to get in this. I'm trying to get it. She ain't trying to tell me though. Hopefully uh, real soon. Hopefully next year when I come back, you know, we can chat about that. So, yeah. So, um, well, stations. How many, how many stations are you syndicated now on, if you can say that? I know you can, but how many now? Right. I wish I had a number. Um, okay. I know that it's a lot. Um, it's on musicalsoulfood.com uh, that you can find us at, but we're all over the place to rejoice Musical Soul Food. So er, it's, it's a lot. So I'm not sure the number, but there are a lot of stations. So I'm just grateful for that. 
Did you ever think that you being in the industry and you move that you get like up here and God will really supersede what you probably even ask him to do at this time in your life and you can help so many other artists get to where they need to get to it? Was that something been in your spirit for a very long time? Well, you know, I I never looked at it like that. Um, I started out wanting to be this television newscaster um, and I kind of stumbled into radio after television um, and I just never looked at it from a standpoint of the accomplishments and the achievement and what I can gain from it or anything like that. Um, I never went into it for that. Um, I just love radio and television and I started out that way. In the process, the Lord saved me and I've been caught up in gospel radio for many, many years. I've actually been in the business for 31 years. Um, and God has blessed my career. I know. You look 30. You look like you're 29. You was in it 30 years. Right. So, <laughs> so um, wow. I, you know, so for 31 years wow. I've been in the business. And he's favored me with Stella Awards. And he's done so many things. Uh, broadcasters, uh, Hall of Fame, just a lot. So I'm just grateful of the things that he's done for me. A lot of times people ask me, well, how do you do that and you know you consider yourself so successful you know it's the favor of God and I like to tell people that if God don't breathe on it it won't be so say that again you have to say that again yeah, I said if God doesn't breathe on it it, it won't be it won't be so he is looking for us to apply ourselves first in the Word of God he's looking for us to perfect our gift and he'll give the increase he will make room for our gift so, you know, we have a par our part to pray, play, I should say, and then from there, we can move on and watch God do some incredible things. He's literally blown my mind in this whole business with opportunities and the things and the doors that have opened for me. So I just encourage you to just work your craft and stay focused on the things of God first and um, stay in order, stay humble, and let God do the exalting in due time because he will do it. I pray as we close up, I pray that um, I can walk. Um, in your footsteps and move in those areas because of the things you have done and pioneered a couple of things um, Of course, I'm in radio, you know, of course on my website television thing So thank God for you and what you contribute to the gospel industry and what you do So thank you so much for that and um, thank you for being 31 and <laughs> Yeah, we go to, yeah, we go. We live here at the Mount right now at the IG double A, double A. Yeah, it is double A, right? Conference with Philip Carter. We here with Tracy Morgan. We thank God for her. Keep it locked right here with your boy Ernest Elo Armstrong on the Say a Peace Show, SYPG Radio. Keep it locked.